Hi guys, Terry here. Welcome to part three. Um, I'm enjoying showing you how I'm using my brother Scan and Cut to scan my Creative Memory albums. Um, I love to scrapbook. I've been doing it for over 15 years. Uh, the kids have many books, <laughs> so I'm working my way through them. And I'm getting on quite a roll with it. So um, hopefully you're enjoying this series. But what I want to do is pick up where we left off last time. Last time we were editing our photos and we were uh, going into each one here and we were trimming them, if you remember. So um, I love that the Brother Scan and Cut um, will allow us to scan these pages and then s either send it to the software or save it to U USB. So love this feature. I'm simply going through here and cropping and getting off the little dotted line there. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, save it to the USB, if you get just what's on the map, or if it's it's a little bit of trimming required for you too. So uh, maybe you guys can put in the comments if you have a DX and what you're going through. So um, let me finish just trimming these, and then we'll pick up where I show um, how I'm joining the two pages, and then we'll bring it into some software and add some music to it. Be right back. Okay, so just as a review, um, I'm going to edit page two. I'm going to do a control A and a control C. So I've got page two copied, and then I'm going into page one. I'm going to zoom out just so I can widen this guy. And I'm going to go over here all the way over to 2,000 pixels. And then I'm going to do Control V to paste. And I'm simply going to butt this one up against this one here. And sometimes depending on how you trim them, um, I'm just going to bring this over to the red. And then notice on the bottom I've got this little sliver of white here. I'm just going to simply bring this up a little bit here. Because those little white lines, you'll really notice when they're on the television because the background's going to be black. So those white lines really show. So I do like to trim those a little bit and get the picture looking good here. So let me save this. And I'll do the next one. So I think this is the trickiest part. I'm, I'm repeating this one so that you get this. So I'm doing Control A, Control C. Got it copied, getting out of it. And now I'm editing page one. And I'm just zooming out so that I can grab this little bar here. Making plenty of room for that control V so when I paste it, I can bring it in here. You might decide to leave a white line there. I tend to um, butt them up against each other just so that white line isn't there. And then I'll bring this in. Um, and then I'll save. If you mess anything out, if you mess any part of this up, just don't save it. Get out and come back into the file and start over. So there's those two. Now notice I can delete those second pages here. And we'll do it one last time. This one I hadn't trimmed yet. So I'll trim these. I'm rotating, getting rid of that red dotted line. You'll work out a procedure that works for you. So that was page two. So I'm doing the control A, the control C to copy it. You might even be proficient with Photoshop and you like to use it and you can bring your images in there. I think it's a little harder to use than paint. So I'm just trying to keep it, keep it simple so that I'm getting it done. And I'm just dragging this and button it up there against where it's kind of even. They're not going to be exact, but when you get them on the television in the home video, the music is attached to it, I don't think people will notice. So, okay, so I've got that on there. So now I've got a handful of pages. Delete page two. So now you can see that I've got my, um, my pages here. Now, what I'm going to do is, this was my second batch of pages, so I'm simply going to move them into uh, Brittany's folder here, and you can see that I have a whole bunch of pages here. So I've got, um, looks like 18 uh, pages, 18 two-page layouts, 
Okay, so now let's go over into the Filmora software. Okay, so I'm using Wondershare Filmora. It's version 12. Um, if you have another movie making software on your computer, by all means use that. But the concept's going to be the same. We're going to import all those pages that we've, uh, all those two page layouts we've put together. We're going to import them into that software and then make a movie out of it. Um, so I'll have a link to Filmora. Um, I think I paid $39 for it several years ago. Um, I think it was a lifetime version of it. Uh, now they might have an annual subscription to it. So you might pay for one year, get your album scanned, and then you know not have to pay year two. So um, I think Filmora is very easy to use. Um, I don't get super fancy with it. I first downloaded it because I had two videos that I wanted to stitch together and make one video for my YouTube channel. Um, so that's working great. So let me show you. Uh, like I said, we're inside Filmora, and I'll have all my links on my blog post to these steps and uh, to the software. But I'm simply going to click on the import button, and I'm going to go get my media files. So I've got my um, files saved here in um, under pictures, the scanned albums under my daughter's name. So here I've got her um, files. Now notice, uh, this was something that I didn't mention. When I was doing all that editing of the pages, um, the files were normally numbered by those screenshots. It was just sequential, sequentially numbering them. Um, you also could name your files so that um, if you wanted to search and find them, you could do that. So if you scan in order of your album, you can just leave them with the screenshot name. Um, but you also could name the files. I've got it named for my daughter's initials, and then I put the year and the month and the day of that um, particular page. So, um, and then you might want to put, like this was her OSU graduation. So you can put a, um, you know, descriptor in there so that you could search for it. Um, but naming it year, month, day will let you sort those in that chronological order, um, but not necessary. Okay, so I'm going to do Control A to select all the uh, screenshots in Brittany's folder, and I'm simply going to press the Open. So now it brought in all 18 of those pages, and I'm going to leave them all selected. Okay, and um, if you if you would happen to click off and not have them selected, you can again do a Control A to select them all, and then I'm going to drag it down here onto the uh, number one track. Okay, so all those pictures, I had them sorted by the file names. Um, here's the sort by. I right mouse clicked here and do the sort by. It, it was by name. I think by default it has that. Uh, you may have to adjust your settings, but I do have it sorted by file name. Grabbed them all, drug them down here. Okay, so now let me get me off the screen here. So if I would happen to hit play, you can see the little red line going across. So I've told each picture to be 15 seconds long, and then now it's going to flip to the second page. Okay? So that's pretty simple, right? We imported them, we drug it down there. Let me show you where in the settings you tell it how long to display that picture. And I'm still experimenting with how long to display that picture. I find that because I have, you know, 10 to 15 pictures on the page, um, you know, if you look at a busier page like this one, um, you might want to let people have more time on that picture. Um, another thing that I'm learning to play with is, uh, oh, well, let me show you that setting. Okay, so under File, uh, Preferences, and then under the Editing, it's got photo duration. Oh, so I've got it set to 12 seconds. And that seems to be working. But you, again, you you bring in some pictures, save your project, and, and play with it and see what it looks like. Um, but you certainly can go in here by telling it 12 seconds, then it, um, 
when you drag them all, that's how long they'll be. And I'll tell you what, if you if you wanted to get super fancy, you could uh, shorten and lengthen these. Maybe you've got a page, maybe my OSU one that's just the beginning of it here, maybe I don't want it to be the full 12 seconds. So I can simply drag it. I can grab that and drag it and make it shorter. Okay, so let me do edit undo for that. Um, so, so in those settings, you can tell it um, how long to display the picture. So 12 to 15 seconds seems to work really good. And then I've also been playing with transitions. Um, I've got one here where I've got the page curl. So if I put this on here and just put it at the end, let me hit play and show you what that looks like up here. So it's going through the process here of showing the picture for 12 seconds. And then when it reaches this point here, it's going to curl the page. So it just looks like you're flipping through the album. And in Filmora, there's a whole bunch of um, animation things that you can do. OK. So we can add that page curl to the end of each page here. So, um, so now let's look at the music. So if I click here on audio, it's got all kinds of music that's out there. Um, if you're not using it in a commercial sense, you don't need to pay for the music. And Filmora has a lot of free music. Um, if you want to see what any of these um, look like, you can simply hit the play button. And it will, I think it does a little download. So there it is. So you can sit there and listen to that song. It also says how long the song lasts for. So let's see how long my video is here with these 18 pages. If I hit this little minus button over here, I can see that my video is lasting about three and a half minutes here. Okay, so I don't know that there's a song that lasts that long. This one here is about uh, 258 and this is something I'm still learning too. So this one here Safari is three minutes long. I'd rather pick the songs that I like the songs and you can certainly download music and import it into here too. I'm just using the ones that are um, you know that come with the software. But once you find which song you like you're gonna drag it down to the soundtrack down here. Okay and it downloads it to your computer and then here it's got the song. Now one of the things that you can do is you can tell it how um, loud to be. Okay, so what I like to do, I double clicked on it to get into the properties here and I click on auto normalization and it simply, you saw it blink there, it simply made it be as loud as um, that I normally have my settings. So. Um, so you notice that this song doesn't go all the way to the end. So I've got a couple options. I can um, shorten my pictures so it's the length of that song. Let's say that you did download, um, maybe I would download Britney's favorite song, right? And then I could either shorten the pictures so it's the length of that song. I don't think you can stretch the song out because I think it would, I don't know what it would do. Um, but I simply, what I've been doing is for ones where I've got, like my scrapbook albums for myself, I had 91 two-page layouts. So I did several songs. And same thing, I found the song that I liked and I dragged it down, okay? So that's more just how fancy you want to get. So then I'm simply, um, let me just throw another song on here. I'll just drop this one on here. And notice that it goes longer. So what I can do is come down here to the end and I can put this red line and cut that. Okay, so I could take that off. I double click here. Notice that blue line is really wide there. It's because I haven't adjusted the volume. So notice that it made it be kind of the same sound level throughout there. So, so I'm thinking this looks pretty good. I've got my pictures. I might want to go back in here and put all my transitions in on each page. And that's simply a matter of, um, I thought I had found a way to, to add this to all the pages. 
I thought one time I did that and then drug it down here and it put it on them all, but it's not doing it this time. So I'm not real proficient in the software. I can go in here, <laughs> import what media I want to use, and uh, put my put my features on it. But see, I'm I'm simply clicking the page curl and I'm just putting it at the end of each photo. So again, there's probably a wonderful way to do this. I should probably Google it. Um, I'll make an updated video when I figure out how to do that. So I'm just putting these on all these. And you could also, um, there's words that you could add, this titles thing here. There's all kinds of, um, I can't say enough good things about Filmora because it has so many built-in things. So you could put a title at the beginning of the page. You could put a little uh, thank you statement or something at the end. And all of these things are just, you're clicking on them and dragging them down there into your, into your video. So, so let's go ahead and export this because that's the last step. So I'm going to do a control A and it's going to select everything and then I'm going to hit the export button. And I'll mention too while I'm doing this, I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it Brittany Album Test. And then I'm just going to simply hit the export button. And then it takes it a little while for it to, um, to save that. So what it's doing is it's taking all those media and things that we chopped up and all the settings that we did and it's saving it as one MP4, okay? Because that's what we're going to upload and share with family. So um, you can, I think that if you use the free version of Filmora, it probably puts like a watermark on there. Um, but you could at least download it and play with it. Um, I don't know if there's still a free version or maybe a trial period. Um, I'll look into that also and update that on my blog post. So there it's done. So it converted it. So if I go out here to my file folders in my video um, folders here, here's where it created Brittany Album Test. And you can see that it's 3 minutes and 36 seconds long. So if I double click that, it will now um, play that mp4. So um, what I've been doing, so here it goes, it's got that music on it. She said that she wants to pick the music for her albums, so get me out of the way. So, so my final steps are then I take this MP4 <laughs> I take this MP4 and I upload it to YouTube. Now I don't make it public because I don't want people to see these. Um, but I have my YouTube channel. I figure you guys don't want to see my uh, family videos. But I have them up there. Um, if you didn't have a public YouTube channel, you could make them public. There's probably nothing in the video that uh, would be of interest to anybody. Um, but then people could search and find the video if you made it public. But I keep it private and I simply share those links out with, um, with family. So, um, so I hope this series has helped. Um, I did it in three parts. I'll have the links to the other two parts down in the description. Um, but hopefully that showed a little bit about how I'm scanning the pages, how I'm using the software to make a home video. So uh, I hope you have a great week, and I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.